You got the touch You got the power Hey everyone and welcome to part 7 of the Monster Hunter Freedom Let's Play series. Today we are going from Hunter rank 1 to 2, so it's obviously the first rank up quest. As you'll be sick of seeing by now, I am using a Rathlos Soul Base set for high grade, sharp ink and detect, and I'm using the Thunder Tip Sword and Shield. Now the quest that we're tuning today is the infamous, the nefarious in fact, Four Horns quest. This involves you killing two plus rank Diablos with elder rank gear, because that's all you can get by this point in the game. Now, um, this isn't like later games uh, dual monster quests where they have severely reduced health. The hit points are almost full from memory. Um, I'm sure that someone will correct me, but I'm under the understanding that it's certainly not the 50% or 60% of the regular health that you see in later quests. Uh, now this, um, so it is of course difficult because you need to use elder gear to do it, um, and plus and plus rank, also known as hard rank or high rank in this game, um, is a little bit more unforgiving than low rank, obviously. Um, one of the other interesting parts about this is that a Diablos is a reasonably high tier creature. Um, so, if, I mean, if you were required to kill two um, two lower tier creatures, like perhaps um, a Rathian or something of like that, it wouldn't be so bad. But a Diablos is quite tricky for new um, newer players because his patterns aren't as immediately obvious. Right now, if you've seen the Monobloss, so part 5 of this Let's Play series, if you've seen the Monobloss quest I did, uh, this is very similar, actually. The only major difference between Monobloss and Diablos is it's got two horns instead of one, and that its weakness is water instead of um, thunder like Monobloss. Now, I am, of course, using a Thunder Sword and Shield, but that's because the best Water Sword and Shield, Frost Edge Plus, um, by this point in the game, is not as going to do as much damage. It's got um, quite inferior roar, and the um, water element is high, but it doesn't necessarily make up for the poor roar. Now, um, the tactic should be reasonably self-explanatory. Um, we're just going to be hitting the left leg until it falls over. Um, so that's the leg on our right. And the reason that we're targeting that leg is because it's a bit more stable. Um, it moves around a little bit less when it is taunting. Um, this is my first attempt at this quest. Um, and I was under the impression that I was going to be facing some pretty tough time pressure, which is why I'm using um, sort of reasonably min-maxed gear um, in that respect. Uh, I was worried about time pressure, so I didn't want to sort of be caught short, which is why I'm using a sword and shield. Uh, were I to do this quest again, um, f um, especially on video, then I would challenge myself a bit more and use um, a, prob a worse class, or even a different class for that matter. Now, as you can see here, I'm hitting Diablos' weak point, which is his tail. Um, it takes a fair amount of cutting damage, and the legs take a decent amount. Um, if I was actually um, going to really actually min max the best gear that you could do this quest with at this point is um, the same armor set but the shining wyvern blade which um, I got from completing the wyverns of land and sky quest which was part six of the let's play series um, I figured that most of you guys probably wouldn't um, be as uh, masochistic as trying to do the wyverns of land and sky quest so I figured I'd just use thunder tip instead um, because it is the most commonly recommended uh, sword and shield for this um, quest after frost edge and as you'll notice, there are no minions kicking around apart from those two Vespoids, which is quite welcome, because they are. If you've seen, like I said, if you've seen the Monoblast Let's Play series, uh, Let's Play video, you've seen how absolutely infuriating minions can be in this game. Now you'll notice that what I'm doing, when it burrows under, I sit still for a second and then run away. That's because if you do that, you will um, Diabolus will actually lock onto your position, and then <clears throat> if you know exactly where it's going to come up, then that gives you the opportunity to get in position and get um, a name for some tail hits um, as it's surfacing. You have probably noticed by this point the pretty um, frustrating foot uh, chip damage. You get bumped around and knocked down um, quite easily in this game, and it's something that they've changed in later games, but here, um, it's quite easy to get kicked once, kicked twice as it turns, and then it will burrow um, and do a fair bit of damage to you just by the burrowing animation. And there's not a the lot you can do apart from um, rolling out earlier and so missing attack opportunities, which is not ideal. Um, and as you can see here, you actually get bumped from behind as well. Uh, but it's one thing that they fixed in later games, which I'm grateful for. Now, by this point in the um, run, I had sort of identified that um, I was getting pretty consistent, pretty quick staggers here. So counting stagger limits um, was was pretty simple, really. Um, and so you'll see me sort of quite often using the roundhouse slash and getting a trip. Uh, the roundhouse slash, which um, is the circle attack, which I did just then, is the most damage that your sword and shield can do with an individual move. So if I have a long opening, I'll do um, four triangle hits, and then it's a roundhouse slash. Smaller opening is just two hits, and then a slash. And if I just have a really small opening, then I'll either lead with a jump slash, 
or I'll do the roundhouse slash by itself. Um, if you're playing portable third, you can achieve that by um, hitting select, and whereas it's uh, tri uh, circle here. Now, um, see where I'm hitting now? That's the weak point of the tail. Um, the very tip of the tail, which I was hitting when he surfaced, is not actually the weak, weak point. It's actually a separate hit zone, which takes less damage. Uh, and if you hit too far towards this, the crotch end of the tail, you're going to hit the body hit zone, which still takes respectable damage, but not as much as the tail. Um, and so this is pretty much uh, the, the, the fight. You're going to be managing your openings, you're going to be baiting it when it dicks, uh, and otherwise you're going to be not getting it in front of it when it charges. That's a little pro tip there from EDU. Um, and ideally you position yourself a little bit better so you can get hits on um, as it uh, surfaces, but that's not always possible. Uh, here's why high grade airplugs are so important, because it, they love to roar constantly in this game. If you don't have high grades, you're going to end up getting char um, locked as it charges and then you're going to end up getting run over a uh, lot and that's going to do a fair bit of damage which is not going to be particularly pleasant. Uh, just as a side note, um, I said that I would try not to use any Mega Potions and I have managed to avoid all so far. Um, I didn't use any in this quest and I haven't even combined for a Mega Potion so far so um, just thought you might like to know. Alright, now because this fight is relatively repetitive, um, especially this one is uh, anyway against this first Diablos, um, I'll just quickly answer a couple of the questions that you guys fired through. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the first one is, which did I find harder, playing piano or learning how to use bowguns? Um, and I must say that piano was far more difficult. Uh, learning how to play an instrument at a young age at the same time as learning musical theory uh, is quite a big ask. Um, you know, it was a really good experience and it was really valuable, but it was really tough. Um, whereas doing the analysis of um, how to sort of uh, maximize Bogan's efficiency and then doing a little bit of training with them to, to get the skills, I didn't find that nearly as difficult, but perhaps just, you know, some people have aptitudes in different things, maybe music wasn't necessarily my first choice, my first one. Uh, the second question is, um, what, what is my opinion on Heavy Bogan's Siege Mode and Dual Swords New Controls in Portable 3rd? Um, my opinion is that Siege Mode is a fantastic idea which is implemented really badly. Uh, such an enormous movement penalty, combined with um, pretty terrible clip sizes out of Siege Mode, combined with um, no massive damage boost in Siege Mode, just means that uh, it's unwieldy, it's not particularly um, fun to use, and in solo play, finding opportunities to siege against fast monsters are completely luck based. Uh, you know, it's through no fault of your own, you can actually end up in a situation where a creature does not give you a single siegeable opportunity, uh, which does not rely on luck in an entire fight, and that's not a good position to be in. You don't want to have um, a system which has been set up for a weapon class which can't be used um, uh, against certain creatures. It's just not a good design uh, philosophy, from, in my humble opinion, of course. So I mean, I think it's a really good idea, and I think um, speed fire plus um, auto re sorry speed fire plus um, elemental attack up was overpowered in Unite. I don't think there's um, going to be much debate about that. But I think the uh, concessions that heavy bargain users were given um, w were poor, is my opinion on that matter. Uh, as for dual swords, I really love the class. I really love the idea of the new enhanced gauge, and I really love the idea of um, spending this time demonized, but I th again, I think it was poorly implemented. Um, sorry, that side of things was really well implemented, and the um, <clears throat> and the uh, dash instead of roll was really was a really good idea as well. But unfortunately, my opinion is that the controls are not particularly crash hot. Um, I f I feel like I'm all over the show. I hit triangle once and two attacks come out. I just don't feel like I'm in control of it, and it's not a particularly good feeling. Partly that's due to the fact that I don't have a million uses with dual swords just yet. Um, but I f if I could have the, the control scheme from Unite plus the, um, the dash uh, enhanced gauge, then it would be perfect. Alright, coming back to the fight, um, you can see that Diablos is raging every single hit. Um, as soon as he leaves rage mode, I hit him once and he goes back into rage mode, which means that he's quite low on health. Uh, before you ask, I cannot capture him because Trank Bombs are a supply item in this game. Which means that uh, for this quest it's kill or bust. Which is not such a bad thing, you know, it's... Um, uh, I think a lot of people assume that capturing will give you excellent rewards all the time, which is not always true. And as you can see there, I stood still for a second to bait it um, into going into a certain position, and then I attacked it where the tail was, although that was not a particularly good example because I had the um, keys in the wrong order and I didn't actually attack. Now, I had been really concerned about this quest. I mean, the first time I did it, when I was um, learning how to play Monster Hunter, it took me 40-something minutes to complete this quest. Um, and by 40-something, I mean 49 minutes to complete this quest. Um, and so, and that was after several attempts. It was not particularly pretty, and so I was still a little bit nervous about how this one was going to go. 
Um, so the fact that I had this one uh, raging every single hit so quickly was was awesome. Um, and so there we are, we have a dead Diablos, and what's that, 8 minutes and 58 seconds, um, which, uh, which I was really happy with. And because the second fight is so substantively similar, and because um, you would be an idiot to not remember to bring stamina items on such a long quest, ha ha ha, um, I've cut out most of this fight. It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is, you would have seen that I had flash bombs in my inventory before. The reason that I had them is because if when you're in these desert zones with the second Diablos, if it hasn't seen you, it'll just stay under the sand for a long time. So what you need, so, whereas if you flash it or throw a flash bomb in the same zone, then it's going to w go, what the hell is that bright light, and then come up. How the Diablos sees the um, light from under the sand, I don't know. Uh, probably magic, or maybe magnets. Right, so with the second Diablos we do exactly the same thing. As soon as we've got it to see where we are with the flash bombs, we just start attacking away at that left leg and then going for the tail as soon as it trips. Um, and once again, the Sword and Shield's blocking capacity is excellent. I've got 25 stamina and I can still block a rage mode Diablos attacks without um, any sort of uh, penalty in terms of damage taken or losing my red health bar. Right now, this Diablos, once again, as soon as it gets low on health, it's going to start dig spamming, um, because that's just how they roll. As soon as it starts doing that, you need to get into um, the habit of baiting it and then going for tail slashes. It's not going to be a lot of damage, but it is important to keep that damage up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if, I, I didn't use any Sonic Bombs on this quest, but if you do Sonic Diablos, then um, the wings are probably the best target that you can hit. Um, the legs take decent damage, um, the wings take better damage, uh, but not quite as good as the tail, but of course the tail is stuck underground when it's been Sonic Bombed. Uh, so uh, target the wings, that's my advice. And in a perfect world there'd be a better water element, sword and shield, um, which you would use, but in, here there isn't. Um, so yeah, I was really intimidated coming into this quest, just sort of for historical reasons. And I mean, this quest is it's absolutely notorious, especially if you ask older players who have um, had the displeasure of doing it solo. It's quite well known that it's uh, a bit broken. Well, not so much broken, just a bit too hard. But here we are. At 21 minutes and 45 seconds in, roughly, uh, we've com we've got the quest completed with Elder Rank Gear, and we didn't have to use any flashes, um, and we didn't have to use any Sonics. Um, which, yeah, I mean, and this uh, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that if, as long as you manage your openings and you understand how a creature works, you don't need a particularly cooperative creature to score up, um, a, a perfectly fine qu cl quest clear time. And this would have been obviously sub-20 if I had um, remembered to bring stakes. So this was the rank up quest. We're now Hunter Rank 2, and we're going to proceed on with the rank up quests from here. Um, I think the next one might be Lao Shan from 2 to 3, and if it is, we're going to skip that quest. Um, and just go straight for 3 to 4, which is the Thunderous Duo, if I remember correctly, which is Dual Red Kezu. Um, just because Lao Shan is hideously boring, especially to watch. Uh, but yeah, guys, this was the quest. I mean, like I said, as long as you're sort of managing your openings and understanding uh, your weapon attacks and stuff, then it's not massively difficult. It's just, and you don't need to play a battle of attrition. Um, but I digress. So this was the quest. I hope you guys um, enjoyed the video and enjoyed my witty commentary. Ha ha ha. Uh, and next up we will either have um, HR 2 to 3 or 3 to 4, depending on which one of, one of those two Lao Shan is. Um, we're coming close to the end of the Let's Play series. After the rank up quests are done, we'll have a crack at Crimson Fatalis, and then we will see where we are from there. And if you guys have any specific requests, then we will see if we can entertain them. Um, unless you want powder stone and don't even joke about it I'm not going to do another powder stone run so thanks guys this is part 7 of the Monster Hunter Freedom Let's Play Miserion out <laughs>